Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember we're, we're here, here for, for you, you, and, and we've, we've got, got your back. back. Well, praise the Lord, my friends, and uh, good evening, good morning, whatever time you're catching this telecast, since it's Facebook and it's being aired, uh, uh, sent around the world, wherever you are, whatever time it is, it's the day that the Lord hath made, let's rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Valentine's Day. I'll be saying more about that. Got some teaching coming on love here in a moment. Stay tuned. Get ready to call somebody. Hashtag and let them know that Elder Don Thompson is getting ready to throw that rock, the word of God. But happy Valentine's Day. Love is in the atmosphere. But let me just go ahead. Just uh, I guess I should say first. I'm Steve Green. I'm the senior pastor of MTC, i.e. More Than Conquerors. More Than Conquerors Faith Church, a family church, a Bible teaching center, teaching quality word, making quality disciples, producing quality fruits. You've been seeing our shield of faith for years there. Uh, we are ministry reaching the world and this great city called the Lord. And we, as long as we got that shield of faith, no matter what the devil throw at us, Man, come hell or high water, God is for us. Romans 8, 37 say, what shall we say to these things? Uh, maybe you may be feeling a little unloved, undesirable, like God done left you out. Man, I'm by myself again. Never alone. I don't have to worry because I'm never alone. He walks beside me all the way. They just he guides my footsteps every day, never again will I be insecure anymore, never again. But don't, don't, don't. Yeah, he walks. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. So what do we say to these things? If God be for us, Romans 8, 31, who can be against us with all the things that's going on in the world? Don't be sorrowful for the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Whether you're catching this on Valentine's or whether you're catching it later because you're out on Valentine, I want to let you know that God strengthened, right? You are my strength. May he strengthen your heart. Strength like no other. Let me stop. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. In the fullness of your strength and grace, in the power of your grace, you lift me up. You lift me up. You are my strength. That's what you need to tell them. The joy of the Lord is your strength. One morning, as we prepare for this awesome teaching, I heard the Lord saying, you know I'm your strength coach. I said, shut the front door. I was looking at my little muscles and stuff. He said, I'm your strength coach. I said, what are you talking about? He says, everything you're trying to do, I love you so much. Say these words, son. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, wow. You know, when a strength coach... Man, you gotta, they don't help you. You don't feel like exercising. You're going to take a little bit at a time. You're not going to see much success uh, for a while. But God says, you're going to be able to do everything I call you to do, no matter who's with you, who don't like you, who used to walk with you, whether you're married, single, or whatever. You better know that God is the strength. <laughs> I better go, whom I, and I have heaven, whom have I in heaven, but you, but you see, there is no one I desire, but you, like Psalm 73 or something like that. Uh, my heart and my strength 
It goes to say many times uh, they try to fail, but there is one true that always will prevail. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength and my portion forever. God, you're the strength of my heart. God, you're the strength of my heart. God, you're the strength of my heart. You're my portion forever, forever. Man, that sound pretty good. <laughs> hey, y'all, that sound pretty good, didn't it? That sounds pretty doggone good, man. A little serenade going on here. You know, Thompson, get ready to wear you out of the words. So I hope something I'm trying to, I'm trying to prep you for this surgery is getting ready to hit, to hit you here. I don't know if we found that over there. Uh, uh, my heart and my uh, heart and uh, fails says my heart many times, right? What you see, my flesh and my heart fails. There's a song, Hosanna, right? But God is the strength of my heart, and he's my portion. Forever. I should know because Sherpain Walker, she loves that script. She probably got it memorized and probably got it in the message. What does it say in the message? She probably got the message. She loves that message. <laughs> she probably can grab the mic right now and tell you what the message says. Give me a message, I think. Tell me a thing or two. All right. I'm excited about it. All right. Let's, let's um, get into it. It gives me great honor, pleasure. This is not just a Valentine's message. Man, this message is going to be uh, straight off the high plates, flat footed teaching, history. For you can understand all our understanding. Getting, let's get understanding. We're gonna uh, be one of the this uh, holiday, Valentine's Day. People spend more money almost than Christmas. I think it's about to outnumber Christmas. But if we're gonna be doing that, can we at least find out <laughs> what love is? We'll talk about it at the end without any further delay. The one and only uh, extraordinary teacher, my opinion, man. Just he can break that word down, man. And stand flat-footed like evangelist Mario Murillo. He's about to move to the left or the right, but he'd be wearing you out. Please receive Assistant Pastor Elder Don Thompson as he teaches the Word of God, a special love message on teaching on, uh, teaching on love. Well, praise the Lord, and good evening, and uh, welcome to More Than Conquerors Faith Church, Wednesday Bible Study. Amen. Where our Apostle Steve Green is our senior pastor. Our First Lady is Minister Deidre Green, and the family of MTC. We're excited tonight. I'm yours truly, uh, Elder Don Thompson, the assistant pastor here. And uh, tonight we're going to be uh, uh, teaching on uh, the subject of, and the topic of love. Amen. On this Valentine Day. Amen. I'm sure you guys have already did your due diligence to make sure that you covered all your bases when it comes to this day. Amen. You know, we we put a lot of emphasis and, and as we observe to try to uh, remind and remember those that we are in love relationships with. Amen. Husbands and wives, uh, fathers and daughters, uh, significant others, um, uh, BFFs, I guess they call them best friends forever. And, you know, uh, some even to the point of what you would call uh, friends with benefits. In other words, this is the season, the time of the year that we're just trying to reaffirm or uh, just to remind that person how much we care, uh, amen, about them. So, you know, so I think it's befitting uh, that we will speak on the subject tonight. And, of course, it's such a broad subject to, to, to talk about, but we're going to take a dive into it and deal with some issues and I think and hit it from a perhaps a, a slight different perspective that we have done it in time past because you know usually around this time we'll be talking about the love that exists primarily between husbands and wives and you know on this specific day but tonight I really want to just take a good look amen and um, at, at, the, at this word love and, and, and its origin and um, and we'll t take a dive into the word of God concerning that but but, but as a sidebar, you know, as today being Valentine's Day, and I'm sure some of you guys getting ready to go out to dinner, or you've been there, or you plan a dinner for your significant other, and you, you know, you got the flowers and the candies, and, you know, I remember even when I was a young boy, when Valentine, you know, would come around, I'm around here trying to figure out how I can get some little 
hearts, some candy, and you know, for, for a little girl that I think I'm interested in. You know what I mean? So and many of you don't laugh because you, you know exactly what I'm talking about, amen? But, you know, it's around this time there, we're we'll, 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 we'll buying rings, jewelry, we're, we're doing all kind of things to, uh, to emphasize and to uh, our affection for someone, amen, some significant other in our life, amen? But, you know, I was looking back at um, uh, the origin of, of Valentine's Day, okay? And, and I wanted to share that with you and remind you and maybe even bring it to your attention because quite often what happens with uh, days or observances like this, uh, they tend to uh, lose their its original intent or purpose for which it came into existence. And so let me just remind you real quickly about where this observance really came from and how it originated. Uh, I was reading um, in, uh, in Wikipedia, okay? And it says Valentine's Day, also called St. Valentine's Day, or the Feast of St. Valentine. All right? So Valentine is, is celebrated annually or on February the 14th. Uh, it's, it, originated, it originated as a Christian feast day, honoring a martyr by the name of Valentine. Hmm. Okay. And through later folk traditions, it has also become a significant cultural, religious, and a commercial celebration of romance and love in many regions of the world. In other words, how it originated has grown into what you and I are experiencing today. You know, it started out one thing, but it became, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it began to expand and, and to grow into dimensions and, and take on this commercialism and, um, and, and, and placed into the marketplace for, for gain. So, but let's, let's dive into it just a little bit more. I'm going to share just a little bit more about, about this person whose name was Valentine, number one. He was a Christian priest, amen, in, the, in Rome. Uh, the scripture... Uh, it states that St. Valentine was persecuted as a Christian and interrogated by the Roman, the Roman Emperor Claudius II. Okay? In other words, he was a priest that had became born again. He was a Catholic priest that was converted to Christianity. And it says that, um, and it was during the time of the Roman Emperor Claudius II. It says, and Claudius II was impressed by Valentine and had a discussion with him, attempting to get him to convert to Roman paganism, mm. okay, in order to save his life. In other words, he had to imprison him uh, because of what he was doing and said, in order to save his life. And Valentine refused and tried, in other words, and Valentine refused and tried to convert Claudius to Christianity instead. In other words, this man, Valentine, the story goes to say that he was so compassionate toward the Christians that were being persecuted during this time in Rome by Claudius II. And so he would do things like uh, he would show love and compassion. He would feed people. They would clothe people. He would even, it was unlawful for Christians to get married at this time doing, under this particular emperor. So he would even perform wedding ceremonies. It was, it was said that he was very philanthropic toward the, Christian, the Christians that were being persecuted heavily uh, in, the, uh, in Rome at this time. So his love and his affection that came as a result of his conversion from the priest, the Catholic, Catholic priesthood, to becoming a Christian, amen, is what, amen, we're talking about here. And so it goes on to say that um, Valentine uh, refused and tried to convert Claudius to Christianity instead. But because of this, he was executed. Before his execution, he is reported to have performed a miracle by healing Julia, who is Julia, the blind daughter of his jailer, Asterius. So he, through the, his relationship 
amen, with the Lord, was able to manifest a miracle, amen, and healed, probably laid hands on this young lady, laid compassion on her, and healed her blindness, amen, and the Lord, amen, and watch this, and the blind daughter of this jailer, and the jailer's daughter and his 46-member household, watch this, family members and servants came to believe in Jesus and were all baptized. Now, now listen, let me ask you something. If this is the origin of what Valentine, and it comes from this man who was full of compassion because of his relationship with the Lord and, saw, and was compassionate toward those that were without, those that were being persecuted, amen, and, 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 defied, and decided to defy even the laws of the emperor at that time and was imprisoned and executed for it, what kind of love is this? Yeah, man. So that's what I want to talk about. You know, it's more than just a candy. It's more than just, you know, a little Cupid. You know, it's, it's amazing to me how we begin to commercialize all those uh, events or uh, significant uh, 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 holidays or holy days. Amen. And they commercialize them and they put it to the market and they're trying to make money and sell stuff. Amen. That has no, and it, it just continues to push your attention away from its original intent. In purpose, like Easter. What does the Easter bunny has to really do with death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior? Like Christmas. I mean, what does Santa Claus really have to do with the fact that Jesus was born as a Savior to the world? So like this little Cupid with the little arrow, amen, and all these little symbols of the heart and those little things that they use now, you know, to, <laughs> to represent uh, what this man really was all about. He was about having compassion, the, the love of God that was in his heart to rescue and to save those that were lost. Amen? Let me, let, let, let me ask you a question. I know you bought some candy and you bought some roses and you probably cooked the steak dinner and you did all that for your significant other. Let me ask you, what did you give God for Valentine's Day? Hmm. What did you give him? You know, tonight... I want to talk about, as a topic on this love, I want to use as a subject, the main subject, in the beginning, love. Say that again. In the beginning, love, love. One more time. In the beginning, love. Now, we're going to find out, we're going to take a little deep dive here, and, and, and you know, we won't, probably won't dive too deep, but we're, we're going to look at it from a different angle. Usually, you know, we'll talk about the different types of love, and you, some of you may know what those Greek words are for love, such as phileo and agape and storge and eros, and, and this, what they, how they apply to the relationship, the human relationship, or agape, and, you know, which is the God kind of love, but... I want to talk about in the beginning love. As a subtopic, what kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? And then if you need a third topic, God is love and love is God. And I want you to think about what, what, what I'm saying to you now because as I meditated and I began to look into the scriptures and began to uh, look at the writings of one of the apostles whom uh, they refer to as the apostle of love, which was John, amen. He was that disciple that leaned in or closer to Jesus uh, at times when they would uh, have supper or when they were in uh, their small gatherings. He was the one that wanted to get close to the heart of the Lord, amen. And so as a result of that, it is quite obvious from the writings of St. John, the gospel, as well as 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation, as a result of his closeness and his proximity to the heartbeat of the Lord, his revelation, amen, has, is, 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 is unparalleled, amen? And so as I was looking at his writings, I, I began to understand, yes, we know that uh, phileo, which is the word for brotherly love, amen, for those of you that are taking those, phileo, yep, P-H, uh, P-H-I-L-E-O, phileo, where we get the word Philadelphia from, but the city of brotherly love, friendship kind of love, amen. It's the fraternal order type of 
love, amen, uh, for, for those, you know, that, has to, that, that have those type of relationships, fraternal, the fraternal oil of police, uh, fraternity, sororities. It's that kind of love that come and share amongst those type groups. So that's, that's, that's phileo. Storge, S-T-O-R-G-E, storge which is the family kind of love, the love that we share as husbands, fathers, and mothers, and children, and siblings, and, and, and cousins, and, aunt, and, and uncles. And it's that family love, which is you know, unique in and of itself because it's because of the blood that we share in common with one another. Then there's eros, eros, E-R-O-S, E-R-O-S, eros, which is sexual love. It is the love that God created, it is the burning, it is the fire that God placed in the flesh for the opposite sex in marriage between a man and a woman. And you, you know how, how off that has gotten, amen, as a result of what we see happening in the institution of marriage itself. But in its original creation, and, and it was for the, to be shared as recreation and procreation between a male and a female within the confines of the marriage relationship. Amen? Now, think about it for a moment. Then there's agape. Now, that's the one we all you know, want to know a little bit more about and want to dive a little bit more into agape. A-G-A-P-E. A-G-A-P-E. Agape kind of love. Amen? It's the God kind of of love. So if in the beginning is love, then watch this. In the beginning, love created the world. Mm. In the beginning was love. Because God is love. We're going to see this in the scripture from the, the apostle of love. As he break, we look at, into the uh, the scriptures a little bit in, in a few minutes. So I'm going to talk about eight aspects of love, and if I can get to all eight of them, I will, and if not, we'll stop wherever you know, time permits. But And the key scriptures uh, to, uh, for concerning uh, this particular teaching uh, tonight and topic is uh, you'll find um, uh, number one, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. I call that a behold kind of love. A behold kind of love. Of love, B E H O L D, a behold kind of love. Then John, also First John four verses seven through twenty one, uh, I call that a beloved kind of love, a beloved kind of love. And then in John three sixteen, uh, you well know that scripture. You know, probably learned it as a child. Uh-huh. Uh huh. John three sixteen. Uh, I call that a so, S-O, kind of love. A so kind of love. We'll look at that a little further. And then in Matthew now, 22, verses 35 through 40. Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. I call that a commanded love. A commanded type of love, kind of love. And then also... In Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6, it's a faith kind of love, a faith kind of love. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then in Galatians 5, 22, I call that a spiritual kind of love. Galatians 5, 22, a spiritual kind of love. Then, of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, guys, you know, that's usually the scripture, the chapter that, you know, speaks volumes when it comes to the subject of love. I've called that a charitable kind of love, a charitable kind of love. And last but certainly not least, in 1 John 2, 15, verse, 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17, I call this a love not kind of love. A love not <laughs> kind of love. And what we will find as we take a dive into this, that 
all these aspects of love originated not within the earth realm, although we, when we talk about love and when we experience love, for the most part, is always relegated to all of our natural relationships that we have have, fest, uh, that we have, have had the opportunity to appreciate and, 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 and celebrate from birth uh, up until now, right? But in the beginning, watch this, we're gonna look at the script, look at the scripture. In the beginning, if in the beginning was God and God is love, then everything as it relates to love came from out of eternity. I'm gonna say that again. Everything as it relates to love came from a originated from an eternal source, not from an earthly or worldly relationship or source. Amen. So let's look at our first uh, passage of scripture. We're going to look at 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to start with uh, verse, verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh, John says, behold, what a word. Behold, that's why I call this a, a behold kind of love. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. In other words, now here's what the ampl I want to read what the Amplified Bible says of that scripture, because this word, behold, it grabs my attention. In other words, he's saying, take a moment now and pay attention. He says in the Amplified Bible, see what an incredible, oh my God, quality of love the Father has given in other words, he said, listen, you've got to take a moment now and really look, take a look into a dive into this love, how incredible it is, the quality of, of this kind of love. This is where it all originates from. The Father has given or shown or bestowed on us that we should be permitted. My God. Oh, my God. I can shout right here. Because it was out of this kind of love that the Father calls you and I his sons, his children. Permitted us to be named and called and counted the children of God. That's the Amplified Version. My God. In other words, this is a behold kind of love. You got to take, take a moment. You got to think about it and take a real good look at you know, what the Father, what God, or what love did. Uh, as it relates to to you now now you know I was thinking about this and and, and for some reason I'm, I began to think about what David said in Psalm chapter eight you know when he when he said you know what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that you would take time out of eternity and spend some time and and with him in time he said when I consider the heavens and he, he began to talk about how the heavens and you know, and the stars and the moons and the Milky Ways and the, the galaxies and, the, and, 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 and all that exists outside of the earth rim. What is man? In other words, is this kind of uh, looks, this is, is to behold. In other words, this is worth taking another look at. It's worth taking a deeper look into because it was this kind of love that created the world. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I, I'm getting excited. Amen. The origin of love, in other words, is not earthly. It's heavenly. Uh, I'll say that again. The, the origin of love. You, you know, we use the term, we use the word so loosely. You know, we, we, even in our relationship with God. Even in our relationship with our spouses and our children and church members. But when you really think about the origin, it was love that created the heavens and the earth. Okay, all right. Uh, look at verse 2. It says, beloved, again, it says, beloved, beloved, and this is what I, where I get the term a beloved kind of love. What do you mean, beloved? Uh, there are several words that. Uh, this word beloved uh, signifies it. It means 
darling. You know, this is the apostle of love. Now, John, he's speaking to the church. Uh, 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 he's speaking and saying, darling or dearest one. He says, precious one. He calls us the adored ones. He calls us the favorite ones. He refers to us as being cherished ones. Or one of the words that you use often, sweetheart. In other words, he says, beloved. You know, it, all of this is will encompass this kind of love uh, that originated in eternity past. Amen. He says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So in other words, he says he's giving us, out of this love, the capacity to be like him. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, I, 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 when, I, when I sit down and I think about this, and, you know, how much God really, you know, cared for me and how much he cared about us, you know, uh, you know, it, it makes me want to go be, beyond and above, you know, whatever it is that you know, my assignment is in the kingdom, what my calling is, what my relationship is. In other words, the love that I'm getting ready uh, to operate in, amen, when it comes to every other relationship, has to have its source from the Father, from God, because that's where it originated from, guys. So, you know, you've heard the statement, love is first vertical, Amen. It's first vertical. The, the, the relationship that you have with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you're going to take that relationship into every horizontal relationship. So if you, the love that you have with the Father, you'll take it into every horizontal relationship you have. Amen. Uh, uh, the peace, uh, you know, the righteousness, the joy, whatever it is, whatever you get from this relationship between the, you and the Father, you take into every other relationship in your life. You're taking it to your marriage, your family. You're taking it on your job. You're taking it into your community, your neighborhood. But its origin and its source is God. Amen. And so here, I'll go into another scripture. And I'm trying to take, take try, trying not to take too much time, but I want you to stay with me. We're talking about in the beginning love because if in the beginning was God and God is love we're going to see this in scripture and God is love okay then um, in the beginning was love now in in in, in 1st John 4 uh, and verse 7 1st John 4 and verse 7 beloved once again we're going to continue on the word beloved uh, he says here in verse 7 beloved in other words precious one Favorite one, sweetheart, he says, let us love one another, for love is of God, so God is the source of love, so and everyone that loveth is born of God, that means that you were born from him and of him and knoweth God. Now, it is so much loaded in that one verse of scripture, guys. It would take a lifetime to divulge it. But I want you to understand something here. What the apostle is saying, apostle of love is saying, let us love one another. Is it possible? Yes, of course it is. Let us love one another. For love is of God. It is source. It comes from God. Amen. And everyone that loveth is born of God. You, you want to know if you're really truly born again? Check your love life. Check your love walk. Mm-hmm. And knoweth God. Now you got a relationship. You know him. Knowing God is knowing love. Having an intimate knowledge of love. He goes on to say, he that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, love was what created. This whole thing that exists came out of God's love for us. And he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. And this was manifested, watch this. Boy, you know, I'm just reading now. I just need to read. I'm just read some of this. And this was manifested the love of God toward us. Watch this. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that 
we might live through him. Oh, my God. And herein is love, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Oh, my God. I'm going to deal a little bit more with that, a little deeper in that, with that in a minute. Now, here in verse 11, once again, two times, not a second mention, beloved, beloved. If God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Beloved, dear one, endeared one, cherished one, favorite one I'm talking, you, yeah, yeah, yeah you, uh-huh, God's favorite. If he so loved us, you have the capacity to love one another. It says no man in verse 12 has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. My God, seems like to me that if we would get to the place where we began to develop and nurture and give attention to the love of God that has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, we will see more manifestations of the things that God wants to see in the earth realm. Amen. We will begin to see people, you know, challenged and changed and, and healed and delivered and set free because love wants to see those kind of things. It's quite obvious. That's why he sent his son. Here by verse 13, know we, know that we dwell in him and he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. Mm-hmm. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, which is going to take us to our next verse of Scripture in a minute. But just, just, just take that in for a moment because he says, John is saying, and we have seen and do testify. He said, I was eyewitness of this, amen, that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Of the world. And whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God, once again, second mention, is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. You can't separate the two. In other words, you can't tell me you love me and hate me at the same time. That, 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 that's a dichotomy. It don't work like that. Amen? You can't tell me you love me and then curse me. You can't tell me you love me and then disrespect me. It don't work like that. Amen? It goes on to say, herein is our love made perfect. This is our goal. This should be our goal as born-again believers, as those in, in Christ. To get to a place where we mature in our love walk, in our love life, in the way that we respond to others. Watch this. He says, and we have, he said, herein is our love made perfect, that, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, watch this, as he is, how is he? What kind of, what, what is he? He's love. So as he is. He's not just love. He, he is love, he's not, but he's not just love. Please understand, there are dimensions to the God that we serve. But what he, one of the, the dimensions and the character quality of our God is he's love. He says, we love him, verse 17, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, guys, so are we, watch this, in this world. We are to be the representatives, the representation. We are to be the, com the, the carbon copy of what God is. What is God? He's love. He's love. All right, so we see that. A beloved, that's a beloved kind of love. Amen. So let's talk about this so kind of love, which pretty much took us right, you know, into the fact that when John said, at least I was an eyewitness, I, I, I saw it, you know, I handled him, 
you know, I listened to him. I heard his words. I, I felt his heartbeat. I, I seen his compassion. I, I saw his care and his, and his concern for his brethren, uh, for those that he uh, created, even in the earth realm. He says, but here in John 3, 16, which is a very a familiar passage, what is a so kind of love? Uh, the Amplified Bible says that is a, he greatly loved and clearly prized us. See, well, no, no, ain't nothing fuzzy, ain't nothing uh, fickle, ain't nothing. Uh, in other words, he greatly loved. So kind of, a so kind of love is a great love. It's a, a, a kind of love that's willing to go over and beyond what's necessary and needful. Amen? Scripture says, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We're gonna, yeah, and, and, and so here's what, what, what the Amplified Bible says. It was a greatly loved and clearly prized. In other words, we are the, we are the prize. We were his prize. In other words, we was his priority. In other words, we were uh, the focal point of his love, the world, the world, the world, that even, in practice it says, that even, that he even, that he even gave up his only begotten unique son. Oh my God. In other words, a soul kind of love is willing to give up the uttermost thing in order to bring into relationship the thing that it is aimed toward. In other words, here's what I'm saying. When it said unique, I look at this word unique and it means different. In other words, Jesus, what was it about the son? He was different. He was exclusive, particular, rare. What do you mean unique? Only begotten. Uh, uncommon. He was the one and only. Exceptional. Extraordinary. Unparalleled. Unprecedented. A special son, singular, incomparable, unmatched, <laughs> solely, unsurpassable, just to name a few. It was all of this that God saw in his son that he was willing to sacrifice for you and I. This was the kind of love that St. Valentine had. He was willing to lay down, lay down his life for his fellow man. What kind of love, my friend, is this? Uh, let me go on and, uh, and to say there was another kind of love. Uh, I saw it in Matthew uh, chapter 22 uh, in verses 35 uh, through 40. Uh, a, a lawyer approached Jesus at, at, at one point in time and, uh, and began to ask him a question. And um, I called this a commanded love, amen, uh, in the beginning. Uh, once again, if you're joining us at this point, we're talking about in the beginning love, in the beginning God. We're talking about what kind of love is this because we so use this word love so frivolously in every relationship, you know, just to be perfectly honest with you. Even in our relationship with God sometimes, you know, it has just become religious, it has become common, uh, and, you know, and it's something that I want, John says, behold, take a better, take another look, take a deeper dive, you know, in other words, get a different, uh, uh, another perspective when it comes to the word love, because the origin of it, amen, didn't come from nothing earthy, it came from something heavenly. It came out of eternity. Amen. And so Matthew here, the, this young uh, lawyer comes and approach him and said, then one of them, uh, verse 35, if you, 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 Matthew 22, 35, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a, a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, watch this now, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Mm -hmm. This is the first and great 
commandment. In other words, so then now, I call it a commanded love. We've been commanded to love God <laughs> with all our heart. This is what the Lord says. He said, love him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first, the priority, the number one, the numero uno uh -huh. commandment. Then he says, he goes on to say, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he concludes by saying, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, if you read in Exodus chapter 20, you will not see these two specific commandments here written like this. But what you will see is ten commandments, and the first five is your love toward God, and the second five is your love toward man. In other words, the love that God has placed as a priority in each one of us begins with our love for him, which helps us to love one another. I'm talking about love in the beginning. Love. Amen? And so it's a commanded kind of love. You, as a Christian, don't have a choice. You have to walk in love. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you why it's so critical that you walk in love, that you live in love, that you uh, develop and nurture in your love walk and your love life. Amen. It's a challenge, I know, because people don't want you to love them. <laughs> Some people uh, 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 appears to be unlovable. But the question is, what is it that God has placed on the inside? Who is it, should I say, that God has placed on the inside of you that gives you the capacity to love anybody regardless of their circumstances or situations? Amen. It's a commanded love. Look at somebody and tell them, say, it's a commanded. Oh, you've been commanded to love. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. The next love of these eight aspects of love, I call it a faith kind of love, a faith kind of love. Galatians 5, 6 tells us that our faith actually works how? I love. Have you really paused and thought about that for a second? Everything that you're believing God for, everything that you're believing God to do, everything that you're believing God when it comes to your, 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 your marriage, your family, your children, your grandchildren, your business, everything that you have faith and, and, and trusting and believing God for manifestation of, faith is inoperative according to the script, if it's not motivated by love. Now watch this on the Amplified Bible. It says, your faith is activated, number one, energized, number two, expressed, number three, and work by love. Oh my God. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. It don't matter what your religion is or, uh, 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 you know, how much you, you say you, you, you know, you're a Christian and how much you, 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 you want to try to portray that you're a Christian. Circumcision or uncircumcision. Don't matter. Uh, your, your preacher, your teacher, your, your Sunday school teacher, whatever. No, no. What really matters is, amen, is that your faith here is the evidence of what your faith is. Your faith works by love. So if you want to know, show me a man and a woman of great faith, and I'll show you a man and a woman of great love. Not just love toward God, but love toward mankind. Amen? Love toward the people of God. Love toward the things of God. Compassionate. Amen? White hot kind of love when it comes to Amen. Your faith. I mean, listen. You know, faith. You know, we, we, we you know, we, we, we always say, "I walk by faith and not by sight." Okay, if you're walking by faith, let me ask you: Are you also walking in love? Amen. Because your love, according to the script, is what activates, what energizes. Your love, love gives you energy to believe 
what God has promised, amen, what God has spoken. Love does that because love never fails. We'll see that. And then in Galatians 5.22, Galatians 5.22, uh, I call this a spiritual kind of love, amen, a spiritual kind of love. Uh, this kind of love comes from your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen, Galatians, 20, uh, Galatians 5 and verse 22. Let's look at that scripture, if you will. You can bring it up for me, if you will. It says, but the fruit, fruit of the Spirit. Notice the word Spirit there is capitalized. So it's not talking about our human spirit, us as a spirit. Amen, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit is, singular, love. Well, we know that's got to be true because God is love. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. You cannot have love operating in your life outside of having a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is why after we give our life to the Lord, after you give your life to Jesus and, and, and you're baptized and you begin to pray and, and study the word and you know, and important, and then you want to take it a step further and, and invite the Holy Spirit to come into your life because he's the one that helps us to fulfill and to be all that God has purposed for us to be. We can't love people outside of loving the Holy Spirit, loving his presence, amen? You know, I, I, grief, don't, don't grieve. You know, we, we do things sometimes that grieves him that, you know, but you know what he promised me? But he promised that he'll never leave you, nor forsake you, nor fail you. So all you have to do is get back in that place because your relationship with the Holy Spirit, amen, is what causes uh, your faith, your love walk to work. Amen? It is the work which his presence within us accomplish. That's why it's so important to spend time in worship. That's why it's so important to spend time in, in, in prayer and in a session. That's why it's so important that when we, we have corporate worship that the presence of the Lord is here. Thank God that you show up. Thank God that the choir shows up. Thank God the praise team is here. But what's more important, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place, in space, in this place. We have to have his presence because it's from his presence, amen, we learn how to love and perpetuate that love to others, amen. I'm almost done. Um, I want to take us to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, amen, and here's what I call a charitable kind of love, amen, a charitable kind of love. This is uh, 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 what we call the, uh, some refer to as the, uh, the Magna Carta of, of the, the scriptures when it comes to the subject of love. We always go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because the, the Apostle Paul lays out, amen, some, some groundwork here that helps us to check uh, our love life, our love walk, amen, uh, our love language, amen, uh, when it comes to uh, walking, amen, in this love that the Father has placed on the inside of us. So 1 Corinthians 13, verse, verse 1, I'll start reading there. Amen, verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, amen, and it says, and have not charity, have not charity, amen, have not charity, root word there is uh, charisma, it's the word charos, where we get the word charisma from, charis, we get the word charisma from, it means a God kind of grace that's on the inside of you, amen, he says that, and then it's translated in many other translations as the word love, amen, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, earthly or heavenly, and have not love or charity, he says, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. 
Uh huh. In other words, verse one in the Amplified Bible says the re that reasoning and intentional spiritual devotion, such as inspired by God's love for and in us. Amen. In verse one, amen. That is inspired by that it is inspired by God's love for and in us. I am only a noisy gong or a clinging symbol. In other words, you can have all the eloquent uh, oratorical skills. You can have. You can speak like an angel, amen. And and and, and you can sound like you know a, 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 a heavenly being. But if you don't have love operating, if you're not operating in this kind of love, it ain't nothing but noise. You, you just you're just making noise. And people know it when, when you're just making noise. Verse 2 says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and, and all knowledge, and though I have a, all faith mm -hmm, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity or love, he says, I am simply nothing. Uh, without God's love, without God's love in me, he says, the Amplified Bible says you are a use, useless nobody. A useless nobody. Uh, you, you, okay, yeah. You, 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 you done preached. You done taught. You done, you done laid hands. You done, you know, you done prayed. You did, you done taught, and, and, and yet, is it possible to do all those things, carry out all those things, outside of a genuine relationship and a love for God? It's amazing what a religious mind can do. But when, but when you have the love of God operating in your heart, it's discernible. Amen. And so in other words, he says, listen, in verse 3, he said, though I bestow all my goods, you're philanthropic to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love or charity, it don't profit me. There's no gain in it. In other words, we have to put it in perspective, guys. Everything that we have been born again and created by God to do has to have its origin in God's love, has to flow out of God's love, has to be promoted by, motivated by God's love. Amen? I'm going to drop down to verse 13. I'm sorry, because verses 4 through 8 pretty much gives us, you know, the scenario of what it really means, you know, to continue, you know, to manifest that kind of love. But when you get to verse 13, it says simply this. And now about it, faith, the kind of faith that can move mountains of faith, you can have that kind of faith, hope, you can believe for everything, amen, and charity or love, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The Amplified Bible says, and so faith, hope, love, abides. In brackets, faith, which is conviction and belief respecting God's relationship, God's relation to God, is, is a conviction and a belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things. That's what faith is. I'm say it again. A conviction, a heart conviction, and belief respecting man's relation to God and divine things goes on to say hope, which is joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. In other words, you got the right relationship and perspective when it comes to God. You got the heart conviction there, and you're ready and, and ready to believe and, 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 and ascertain all the things of godliness. Amen. But he goes on to say, in love, which is true affection for God first and man, growing out of God's love for us and in us. He comparison here, faith, hope, and love. And he concludes by saying, these three, these, are, these three are, nece are necessary as a Christian, as to operate as a Christian. 
as one who really believes and have a relationship with the Father. He says, but the greatest of these is love. We've talked about the eight aspects of love. A behold kind of love. A beloved kind of love. A so kind of love. A commanded love. A faith kind of love. A spiritual kind of love. And a charitable kind of love. But last not, but not least, let me conclude by talking about a love not kind of love. A love not kind of love. This, when I was studying and preparing, you know, it kind of gave me, I kind of found myself with a question mark in my head because on one hand, and pay attention, and pay, you know, listen to me closely. On one hand, this apostle of love, John, who wrote John, uh, St. John and, and First John, th these epistles, tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the son so loved the world that he gave his life. Amen. That we may have eternal life through that relationship and through the sacrifice. But here in 1 John 2, verse 15, the apostle of love <laughs> says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And I said, okay, now wait a minute. <laughs> Sound like this is a this is an oxymoron when 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 John said, God so loved the world, God's love was for the world. Why is it then I can't love the world? But when you really take time to study God's love for the world. It was his love for the world that he created that he had lost because the word says, Jesus said, I came to, to save that which was lost. It wasn't so much the human race. Everything in creation was lost as a result of what took place when Adam turned it over to the enemy. So here's what God's love came to rescue, to save to deliver, to purchase, to get back what was lost. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans that the whole creation groans and trails, uh, is, is, is travailing, waiting on the manifestation. Everything was put, uh, has been put in, in, into a panic, you know. Uh, it, sin and disobedience and tre treason caused everything to go into a disarray. So God's love for the world was to rescue, to save, to deliver, to put back in place what was lost. But we have to be mindful when it comes to our love for the world. We have to be mindful in verse 16. For all that is in the world, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen. Any man... Love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. God's focus is on rescue and, re and restoring and recreating that which was lost. We have to be mindful that we don't allow the things. Amen. God don't mind us possessing houses and cars and careers and, 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 and things. But it, the critical thing is it's not to allow the things to possess you. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? In the beginning was love. Love created it all. Created the heavens and the earth. Came out of love. And my God, love has now been shed abroad in our hearts as Christians by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And it is that love that we operate in that's proof, someone would say proof in the pudding that God 
is in your life. Listen, I pray that something has been said tonight on this Valentine Day night. Amen. Now, now that you know that the real reason for the observance of this day was a man that had a love for God and God's people, that he, lay, he was willing to risk his life. Amen. And, and for, for saving others. Amen. And so I pray, amen, that the word has found itself on good ground tonight, that it will produce fruit in your life, 36 and 104, that will continue to remain. Let the love of God, amen, rest and rule in your heart by the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee you, you will be the man or the woman, the, the husband or the wife, the father or the mother or the child that God has created you to be for such a time as this. God bless you. Love you. Wow, teaching, teaching. You know, Hosea said something in 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The intercessors told us some weeks ago, the biggest lack is not money lack. It's when you don't have knowledge of who God is, when you don't know God intimately, when you don't know what the word of God says. Thank God we got some people that have studied, like Elder Thompson just did, to study themselves, approve unto God. They can tell you what God said. They can give you the history of fables and myths and legends and where all these things come from, the source and the origins, what he did, my God, with Valentine and, and oh my Lord, just, just excellent stuff. You might want to hear that one over and over again. Uh, they, they get us to a place we ain't just trying to just console you. Man, the anointing, when, you know how I many people are depressed and sad and have no joy and feel like, uh, they, you know, uh, God let me down again. The Bible says Abraham, who against hope believed in hope. Thank God, blessed be the Lord, Peter said, who have begotten us again to a lively hope uh, uh, and, and to an inheritance uh, undefiled reserved in heaven your time's coming if it's to be amen so thank you for keeping reminding us elder thompson to keep the main thing the main thing and the main thing is if we want to know somebody said want to know what love is want you to show me right if you want to know what love is first john 4 says god is love so if you ain't got god I don't care what you love, you don't have no love. Amen. Let us love one another for love is of God and love is God. Amen. As a matter of fact, that same John, little John, the epistle would write in 1 John uh, around chapter 4, around verse 18. He says, perfect love. Somebody say, I got the perfect love. I got the perfect man or woman. Okay, let's, let's put him to the test. Let's do the litmus test. Let's, let's get the gauge and barometer for real. Let's see. Perfect love cast out all fears. That's what John says. Perfect love. It exercises fear and it, it, and it turns fear inside out. It dispels every trace of anything that's in your life. Uh, first of all, if God loves you, he'll love you enough if you got cancer in your body, if you got disease in your body. He loved you so much that he died to get every trace of that out. Perfect love casts fear Amen. If you're in a good shelter, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink. And God's taking care of you. God loves you in the perfect way. You may not have everything that you want, but you have everything that you need. As a matter of fact, I was just thinking about the word uh, just a moment ago. I wrote it down uh, uh, in between preparation about Valentine. I like to hear that word V-A-L-E, uh, V-L-E. It was several dimensions of what this thing releases, uh, what Elder Thompson was just releasing in terms of understanding the heart there. <laughs> Amen. God is the strength of my heart. The first one was uh, uh, V-A-L-E-T, Valet, Valet Park. If you went to anywhere, but one. You know, have you ever gone to a place and all the good parks are up front? <laughs> and then they ask you, are you valet park? You think I'm going to pay you $40 to park my car and I don't know what you're going to do with it? It may take some out of my glove compartment. May, may not. But valet is when, when you don't have to park it, somebody is driving the vehicle. Can I tell you that God is driving your vessel and your vehicle to success to make things for you can just walk right on in to where you want to go. That's what valet, valet time, valet, valet number two. Then there's the valley, valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley on this valley. Valentine's Day, I will fear no evil, but thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me, thou prepares a table before me in the present. Somebody say, is he the God of the hill and not the God of the Valentine? I'm sorry, and not the God of the valleys? It may be a low place, but God says, speak comfort to my people. Tell her that her warfare has been accomplished, uh, and I will cause every rough place to be smooth. Every valley shall be exalted. Uh, every mountain shall be brought for the word of the Lord, for the for 
for the grass withers and the flower fades. Uh, if you did get some flowers, it's going to be dead in a week. The flower fades, but the word of the Lord abides forever. The valley, he walks us through the valley. Not only that, but where are the valedictorians? Uh, valedictorian, valedictorian, dictate. You wrote down, you dictated, not under a dictator, but God was dictating your future. May God be, uh, may in this class of 2024, a uh, Valentine recipients, uh, may you be the valedictorians, uh, and may it may look like the person around you, your BF health man is out eating steak, prime steak, and all that kind of public house steak, but I want to tell you in the name of Yeshua. You are the valedictorians. Uh, if you're listening to the mandates of God, uh, if you're doing what God say, it's not that you can't have fun. It's not that God won't give you a husband or wife. It's not that you can't go out on the town, but uh, he walks with me. He talks with me. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, he makes me at the head of the class. You ought to say I'm the head uh, and not the tail. I got my head on straight. That's why I choose not to be with some of these folk that don't know what love is. Uh, you better give God praise. He shall feed his flock uh, uh, valedictorians and carry the little lamb in his own bosom. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the valedictorians, there's the valve, the V-A-L-V-E. That's the heart. Uh, that was love. When we think about love, we think about the heart. Uh, when my heart is overwhelmed, uh, lead me to the heart. The very valves of your heart. Uh, everything that's got your heart locked up, the cholesterol and all of that, every chamber of your heart. Uh, may he bring you in the valve into the chambers, uh, not just of your natural heart but I better close this thing here for the son of Solomon uh, the lover of all lovers uh, he had too much love 700 wives uh, and 300 concubines uh, but he wrote the song of songs uh, greatest of love long songs uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about uh, Luther Vandross here uh, I'm not talking about Teddy Pendergrass or none of that uh, I'm talking about the song of all song uh, the song uh, of Solomon uh, the song of Solomon uh, and he says draw me and I'll come running after you he says, you let your name uh, be poured forth. The pouring forth, when I call your name, it's greater than obsession. Uh, it's greater than the perfume that people put on themselves uh, to go out to try to impress one another with the fragrance and the incense uh, of that perfume. His name, Jesus. I dare you on this Valentine and say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Lover of my soul. Uh, he said, draw me uh, and, uh, into the king's chamber. Into the king's chamber. He brought me into his chamber like he did Esther. Esther went into the king's chamber with the invitation of the king Ahasuerus uh, uh, and said, girl, what do you want? Oh, come into the king's chamber and worship. Oh, come into the chambers. Uh, I'm not talking about the chambers of your heart. Uh, I'm not talking about the chambers of commerce here, your business. Uh, I'm talking about your life chambers. Uh, I'm not talking about the chambers of your bedroom. Uh, I am talking about that part of you that if your heart is not beating uh, in the name of Jesus, you can not survive a song of Solomon says he brought me into the king's uh, chamber and then he goes on to say what was his description uh, of being extended into the chambers like like we saw Esther and she said my whole house uh, is about to be destroyed uh, but in this year 2024 I remind you even around the Valentine season uh, that the Lord said as for me in my house uh, every child every man every job everything uh, that's on your heart God says I will perfect fact that which concerns you when your heart is overwhelmed uh, come into the king's chamber and when he gets to the thinking about that like uh, just like we see Esther doing she said that old wicked Haman uh, has told lots of lies and plots and schemes uh, to try to destroy my whole race uh, I pray that in this black history month uh, that you'll be reminded that God loves us as a race there'll be no unnecessary genocides, homicides suicides uh, for those that thinking about taking a gun and putting it to your head put the gun down those of you that's about ready to overdose uh, and drive off the bridge put the car in reverse uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus I commend those of you that's polluted in your own blood uh, I commend the four chambers of God to begin to pump the blood of God through your heart and live in the name of Jesus uh, so the end of the plot of Haman was over because the woman of God understood the real chambers is not the chambers of your booth uh, somewhere in a cabin somewhere in Gatlinburg oh that's fine uh, somewhere in a, a five uh, of the Las Vegas
think of Starkville. Y'all ain't talking to me. But I'm talking about when the, uh, your whole earth is falling apart. I better leave this thing alone here. But he would go in and uh, give God some flowers because when God showed up uh, in Song of Solomon, I better quit. You can bring that up in chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, he says, I am uh, the lily of the valley. Uh, I am the rose of Sharon. Uh, before I leave this place, before we leave, uh, having given you all kind of truths, uh, line on line, Elder Thompson, uh, precept on precept, I want to breathe uh, new life into your destiny so you can serve God uh, with all your heart. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, I am the, the rose of Sharon, uh, and I am the lily of the valley if it's possible. Please bring that up uh, over in the Amplified Bible uh, because the Bible tells us in Isaiah 35 uh, that those that are in the wilderness shall blossom uh, abundantly like a rose. Uh, but Son of Solomon says, I am the rose uh, of the Sharon. I'm like an autumn crocus. Uh, he says, I'm a plant that grows uh, in a difficult place. Uh, notice he says, I am. Uh, uh, he says, I am the rose of Sharon. Uh, I am the only uh, like a little rose uh, of Sharon, an autumn crocus uh, of, the, uh, of the plain uh, of Sharon. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, all everybody named Sharon uh, would love that. Uh, I'm humble like a lily of the valley. Uh, the valley, valley Victorian, the valley, what's that in brackets? Uh, it's, it's a plant uh, that grows uh, in deep and difficult uh, places. Uh, oh my God, I feel you shout now. Uh, you're in a difficult place in your life. Uh, but the prophet Jeremiah said, uh, Oh Lord God, uh, thou hast made the heavens and the earth uh, by thy great power. Uh, is, and nothing is too difficult for you. Come on, Sarah. Uh, Sarah said, Is there anything in Genesis 18, 14? too hard for God uh, Isaiah 41 10 uh, he says fear not uh, for perfect love cast out all fear I am with you uh, I will uphold you uh, I will strengthen you uh, he's, a, uh, he's a strength coach uh, don't you be afraid uh, Isaiah 41 uh, 10 and 11 uh, he says I'm going to be with you even to the ends of the earth so give God a praise that you may be in a difficult place uh, you may be in a low place uh, but when you got the road not just a flower but when you got the rose being personified Jesus said I'm not a vase uh, I'm not a vase uh, I am the rose of Sharon uh, I'm not some company delivering something enjoy that who don't want no flowers uh, a card uh, some kind of message I get that uh, but, but most of all uh, Jesus said the real rose of the person uh, is a lily a lily is a plant that's low it's been stepped over it's been walked over it's been passed over it's been rejected it's been lied on it's been been bruised. It had contusions. Uh, it had all kind of perforations and punctures. But in the name of the G, in the, the name of Jesus, uh, the lily of the valley, Valentine's Day. Uh, out of all the people around you in your circle, uh, in your uh, a five, five, in your family, you may seem like you're the only one that's made progress. But the devil is a liar. Uh, God says you're going to be like the rose of Sharon. Uh, you're going to still get everything you need uh, in the most difficult place in your life, and all the people of God said Whew. amen all right that's the end of that all this teaching last couple of nights Monday night I was teaching Tuesday night we, and uh, we heard from the season men and women of God on worship and the tabernacle and devotions and and, uh, and how you enhance it and tonight we heard on just love just period well, Sunday, Sunday night. We'll still have church Sunday morning, but this coming Sunday night at 5 o'clock. We're going to walk through that door. No, we're going to walk through the door of Denison Avenue, but this place is going to feel like heaven. It always, we try to make sure it always feels like heaven, but we ain't trying to just have church like what you see. A couple of uh, uh, months up the road, we might have a little choir concert where people, you know, come in just because they love music and it's a form of entertainment. I get that. Amusement. But I'm talking about the Revelation chapter 4. Four and twenty elders, where well, they love God enough to come and worship God. We call it, uh, Lord, we adore you. Now, one thing for God to open up a door for us, but can we open up the door to him? We will adore you, God. We know you to walk, want us to walk through that door and worship you. Invite somebody, and even if they don't come, tell somebody, I got a spot for myself at the altar. I'm going to weep between the porch and the altar, like Joel said, and say, Lord, spare thy people, and we're going to get some serious, serious breakthrough because 
really, if the truth be told, real intimacy, when you're in really intimacy, even the natural realm, you don't let everybody in your bedroom. It's not for a multitude, is it? That's a private experience. It's a private experience. So if you want to etch out your private space, bring your private pillow and lay here and, and just uh, before the Lord and, and you and God just, uh, sw- just whisper sweet nothings to each other's ears, you come on. Amen. And if that ain't enough for you when we get through with that, of course, every Sunday morning service, uh, Comic Forth, we're certainly excited about that on Sunday at 10 o'clock. We've seen so many moves of God. Super Bowl Fellowship was off the chain. The, uh, and all that God is doing in so many ways, we're so excited about that. But uh, this worship love is nice. It's going to be some kind of awesome. But mark the date also as I close. Don't forget about the black history. The black history. We could have taught black history from Song of Solomon. She says in opening chapters in Song of Sol- Solomon, her stepbrothers uh, would not let her. They put her in the vineyard, but she says, but she kept their fields, but she said, my field I have not kept. She said, I am black, but I am lovely. Sound like some back in the 60s. I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. She said, I am black. Some believe that she was of uh, African or dark persuasion, Middle East. Well, she was talking about her, her ethnicity or the tone of her skin. Or if she was talking about, I'm just depressed because I've been keeping everybody else's stuff and loving what everybody else do, but I ain't got nothing to show for myself. That's, that's over in Song of Solomon chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. She says, I'm, pr- I'm black, but I am lovely. Amen. So Black History Month, we've had some black days. Man, if you'll bring that up, uh, black, uh, uh, that uh, uh, flyer up called I Know Where I've Been. I Know Where I Have Been. That'll be the fourth Sunday in the 10 o'clock service. I know where I've been. And you know, if you're of the African-American or if you've been in any part, the enemy has tried to give you a black eye. But this is the month, not just for black people, that you re- look back and remember how dark it used to be. But God, the light of the world, came in and gave you light of the world. You stepped out, out of darkness. You opened my eyes and I let me see beauty that makes this heart adore you, right? Hope of a life spent with thee. So here I am to worship. Hey, we'll do that on that Sunday night or that Sunday morning. I'm going. Elder Thompson, thank you so much. Word of God, you got a little bit of spirit and truth and truth and spirit. We both are going out between knowledge. But that's what happened when Paul and Silas tag team and do some things together. You ain't never scared. Amen. Peace to you. Peace to your house and peace to all that you do. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord keep you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace and make his face to shine on you and turn all of his attention toward you is my prayer. God bless. Thank you.